What's going on, my homies? Welcome back to the garage. We're back in Alabama, so we're gonna do some garage talks. I love doing these kinds of videos because we can talk baits, we can talk techniques, and, and break down some lures. You guys seem to enjoy them too, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Bog is hanging in the house, but you're probably gonna see him in the next video when we get out fishing. Not that one, maybe this one? That's the one, that's the one, yes. But today we're gonna to talk OG topics, and I'm kinda of OG a little bit, so it fits perfectly. And there's two baits, and actually this one is perfect timing for fall, you know, we're in the full swing of fall, or it's coming along, things are starting to cool off, and it is the perfect bait for fall. We're actually, I'm totally sidebarring, we're gonna do a whole series of garage talks, um, breaking down some baits, hard baits, soft baits, top water baits, all direct applications or direct techniques for fall, how to use them, how to approach it. But this guy, this guy is basically on level, I would say with a ribbon tail worm when it comes to classic OG baits, and that's this guy right here, a fluke, or a soft plastic jerk bait. And you'll notice too, soft plastic jerk bait, right now if you're watching any other YouTube stuff, reading any articles on Bassmaster, MLF, they'll be talking about throwing a jerk bait for bass in fall. And what's interesting is they're oftentimes talking about, say, like a hard jerk bait, you know, a, a Mega Bass 101 or uh, 110. Jeez, I, I should know what it's called, right? But a 110, a 110 plus one, um, maybe that uses very hardcore. They're talking about hard plastic jerk baits, oftentimes what you throw in the spring. This guy does not get enough love because maybe it's so simple and so old school. So, what we're going to do in this video, I have all kinds of tips with these because I've caught a million fish with these. This is really a classic Florida bait as well, but there's a bunch of different ways that I rig this thing up and just some, some basic things to do with this in order that it fishes better and it fishes in the water column that you want to target. So let's get right into it. The first thing that, that I'm going to tell you right off the bat, and you guys know I'm not a big like colors of baits guy, and with a fluke, you don't have to be a colors of baits, guys. So this is, I think this is ghost, yeah, this is ghost shad. But pretty much, I'd say 90% of the time, and especially in fall, in fall it's probably 100% of the time, I'm throwing something that's like smoky, clear like this, or, you know, kind of like maybe whitish, that's a zoom, um, that's a baby fluke, it's the glow blue, but basically something that's like whitish, lightish, bait mimicking. There is, let's see, two exceptions and and neither of them have to do with fall when i'll go to say like a green pumpkin june bug or a darker style um jerk soft plastic jerk bait and that's one if i'm fishing in florida um uh, the the fish tend to focus a lot more on brim so that june bug that watermelon red things along those lines um really tend to sort of mimic those brim in florida and work better from a fluke standpoint and then the other thing is during spring um we're fishing around fish that are either moving up or they're on beds so i want something that looks like a bed invader yes a shad or something like that will invade the bed but more often than not it's going to be a brim shell cracker some kind of pan fish that's getting up in there and like perturbing that fish so that that's when I'll go with a darker bait. Also, usually the watercolor is a little bit darker in spring, so I like those darker baits as creating more of a silhouette instead of being super bright. But that's the colors thing. It's pretty easy though. Literally, like, go to Tackle Warehouse, go to Walmart, get a, like a white or an albino fluke, and you will be just fine. I keep two sized baits, and this is actually key to fall. This is a standard size. This is about, I think it's four and a half or five inches. This is a Gambler Super Stud. But then I also have these guys. These are, are these the Juniors? Yeah, Super Fluke Junior. So we'll do a little comparison. You can see that's the Super Fluke Junior versus the, the Gambler Super Stud. It's about like three inches, it's a little smaller. I've actually drop shotted these as well. But the reason I keep these on hand is I'm not fishing for spotted bass as well as smallmouth. And one of the biggest challenges in fall is the bait gets really tiny, especially if you're dealing with shad. Um, oftentimes these things are keyed in on on like fingerling size. They're like the size of your pinky if not smaller. So having a smaller presentation is key. And that's what's really cool about a, f a fluke too, because in fall, they're, they're schooling, they're usually up in the water column, the bait rises as that water cools. And a fluke is great at targeting the first, I don't know, three or four feet of the water column. And I'm gonna show you a trick on how to modify that and make it more versatile. But it is, even though it's a jerk bait, it's kind of like a topwater bait. I would group it into more of a topwater bait because 
if you're fishing it straight, it never really goes below like one to three feet. Even if you're, I guess if you count it down, it goes down below. But when you actually walk this thing, it actually does a walk the dog pattern, kind of like a, um, a spook would. So you're, you're basically, you know, popping your rod and you kind of give it slack and give it kind of a cadence and that, that bait will jerk back and forth and it actually rises to the top even when you let it sink and you'll see it kind of skitter across the surface. That's why it's such a great mimicker for bait fish um, during times of year when you, you have a lot of fish schooling. It looks exactly like what the bait does when it gets all kind of grouped up and it's running away from these bass that are, that are schooling on it. So rigging wise i'm going to show you well first of all i'm going to tell you kind of the the main way i rig it and especially if you're fishing it in shallow water i mean like one to two feet um i will throw it on a standard um spinning rod uh, something like this this is my 610 ks2 elite this is a medium action rod you can go up to a medium heavy depending on the size of the fish that you're dealing with uh, but you don't want anything too heavy this is a 610 Ideally, you want it maybe a little bit longer, especially if you're fishing in open water, maybe a seven foot, seven one, seven two, because that longer rod will give you a little bit longer cast. Um, but it's my standard spinning rod setup. So I have braid, 14 pound, to this is eight pound fluorocarbon leader, but I'll go up to 10 or 12 pound this time of year. Um, what you want to play with is your sink rate. Um, that wider line will actually cause that thing to sink slower. The other thing too is if you're dealing with bigger fish, oftentimes when they're schooling or you're, you're really jerking this thing, that lighter line, you, you can snap it on the hook set because they'll come up and crush it or they'll grab that bait and they'll dart away so fast it puts a lot of tension and a lot of pressure on your line. So going up to maybe 10 or 12 pound test, 12 pound at the max, unless you're fishing in Florida and there's, there's megas. I used to put 15 pound mono on there, um, but I would recommend fluorocarbon instead of mono. And there's one reason for that. With a fluke or with a, with a jerk bait, I want everything to sort of help me keep that bait down because I can get that bait to the top super quick just with some rod twitches and um, movement on the rod and basically just fishing it will bring it to the top. But anything that I do rigging wise or with my the way I present this guy, I want it to, to keep that bait down and kind of cause it to sink a little slowly, mind you, very slowly, because this is kind of a subtle presentation, but that fluorocarbon will, will weigh it down a little bit and cause it to sink. So hooks wise, pretty standard with it. Um, now, let's see if I can say the word right, O'Shaughnessy. So these are O'Shaughnessy hooks, they're, they're your standard, they're not extra wide gap, they're just wide gap hooks. Um, this is a four out, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the owner wide gap. This is what I'll use on the standard flukes across the board. The reason I don't go with an extra wide gap is I like sort of the, I got one rigged up right here so you can kind of see. Do you see how streamlined that thing is? What these, these jerk baits have in the middle is a small slot you can see it right there. And basically the amount of plastic that you need to penetrate for that hook to get out is probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a hair more, but it's not very much because you actually embed that hook right inside that slot. So you don't need much of a hook. And really, oftentimes you're fishing this around schooling fish. This is probably one of the most productive and most trusted ways to catch schooling fish. Uh, schooling fish, uh, I'm sure you guys have dealt with it, they're very swatty, you know, swatty, that's new new term, swatty. So they, they kind of, they thrash or they swat at the bait. That's why it's oftentimes better to almost catch them on a spook or something along those lines. But if you're on a bunch of schoolies, like it's nice to have a single hook where you catch them, pop the hook out and get right back in there. But what happens is, is this, it's a lot easier to, to pop through that hook when they crush it like that um with with just your standard offset chain hook versus like an ultra wide gap where you get a reel down on them it, it just leads to more um more consistent hook sets i guess you could say and i always like smaller hooks now one reason to maybe use a wide gap plus hook is to get a little more weight on the bait um to or if you're dealing with bigger fish you know it might have a wider gauge to it but overall in general applications when it comes to soft plastic jerk bait stages standard hook smaller and the same applies for for this guy too i'm not going to rig it all up but you can kind of see um you can actually that's a perfect diagram you guys see how that kind of would would sit right in there just like that that's on the the super fluke junior but 
it's literally ready for the hook to pop out. It goes right through, it'll go right through, it'll pop right through that that crevice that's on there too. Um, so that, that's the basic rigging hooks wise, basically a one aught or, or a three aught or a four aught, depending on, on what you're going for. Now, normally, like I mentioned, I, I have that on a spinning rod, I'm gonna run leader, you know, so I'll have that eight, 10, 12 pound leader. And if I'm fishing it shallow, I'll tie that leader up like I would if I was fishing a net or a drop shot where I'm tying leader to braid. And it, that's my direct connection, whatever you know, knot you wanna use. Uh, so it w I'll have 15 foot of fluorocarbon on there or something along those lines. So I got quite a bit of line, good to go. Now the trick is a lot of times, especially that I'm finding, what I'm finding in Alabama is, you know, you'll, you'll have fish that maybe are, they're schooling on the bank but that bank then drops off to like six, 10, 12 foot, and it drops off pretty quick so that where, where you're at the boat's like say 20 foot or so. So oftentimes I want the bait to be able to be on the surface right when I cast it out so I can twitch, twitch. But as I bring it back towards me, I kind of want to be able to let that thing sink and maybe get a little, a little depth. And that's where this rig comes into play. And I would say outside of Florida, 90% of the time, this is how I'm rigging up a, a soft plastic jerk bait. So I got my soft plastic jerk bait with my little owner hook. This is leader right here, if you guys can see it. And then it comes to a small ball bearing swivel, just like that. And this is maybe, I'd say like 16 to 18 inches. Nothing crazy. Basically, it's enough so that I can cast it without having to make like this huge swooping cast because I have so much leader out um, and then I tie this guy directly to the braid so what does this achieve it achieves basically two things one's more important than the other one you get less spin on your line to your braid because that that's that, that um, swivel is there isn't going to spin up as much but we, we run into spun up line with spinning rods anyways that just happens the other thing though that that I like is between that little four rod hook right there and this little barrel swivel right here, I've added maybe like a 30 second ounce to the bait and to the presentation, and I can make that thing sink very gradually, but at the same time sink at a little faster rate than when it's just on the hook. You'd be amazed how slow these things sink when they're just on a hook, but you put this little swivel right in front of them, and you get this nice kind of gradual, it sort of falls in a, in a gliding motion, um, and it's perfect, especially if you're, say you got some fish popping up, cast it out there, twitch, 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 you have one, just smash it. So usually I do one of two things. One, I'll go twitch, twitch, twitch really fast, try to get them to kind of reignite and re-trigger. Or two, I'll let that joker just sit there. So they hit it, they missed it, dead stick it. And what happens is that bait glides down, and I think that bass thinks it, it injured it or it, it sort of knocked it unconscious. One of the best frog bites I've ever been on, literally you would have to let the fish blow the frog out of the water, wait four seconds, and the fish would come back and, and eat it. Because I think those fish were, were knocking it or, or shocking it or kind of you know, just basically getting it disoriented and then they come back and eat it. And the same thing happens with this flute. So that's the, the, the rig I'd recommend. If you're fishing around a, lot, around a lot of grass, that's when this gets a little bit annoying though, because you will get grass tangled on it, any kind of clingy slime and stuff like that. It's just another thing for it to get tangled on. But more open water or sparse grass, that's the rig you want to use. 16 to 18 inches of fluorocarbon, Mono if you want to keep it up, but I would not recommend mono. If you're using this rig, you probably want your bait down a little bit. Um, and then whatever hook applies, and then just put a little barrel swivel on there. It casts a lot better that way too. You'd be amazed by adding just that little swivel. It, how much, and actually just the shorter leader, how much easier it casts. So a fluke doesn't sink. We've really kind of like emphasized that part, but it's super versatile. So one thing I've tried to do is figure out ways that I can make it, I guess, more able to fish in different water columns. And that's what comes to my little trick here. And so I went to Walmart and I got a bunch of split shot. Now Tackle Warehouse, all your tackle dealers offer like super easier ways to do this in the form of a screw lock hook. But a lot of times you don't, I don't know about you, but I don't have enough space. Like this is my hook box and I don't want to have more hooks than that. I got some circle hooks lying around and some stuff like that. But overall, I, like I can't carry every hook that I need. There's so many belly weighted hooks with different weights 
that that is just too much. So what I've done, this is a, a trick that I used to do in, in Wisconsin because we fished a lot of flukes, darker flukes up there a lot of times um, during the spring, but you have split shot. The best way to do this is to take some shrink wrap, or not shrink wrap, but um, shrink tubing and put it right around the hook right there. But more often than not, you're just gonna be on the water. You're not gonna be able to do that. But all we're doing is belly weighting the, the hook on the fluke. And it's a little bit annoying. So basically you pinch your, your, um, your split shot. And what that does is it opens it up so that it has a little mouth right there like Pac-Man. And once you have your fluke rigged up, you put it on the hook. It's gonna be a little tricky to show, but you basically you put it on the hook just like that. You find a place for it. And then you turn it back towards you. And don't drop it. That's why they give you a million split shot in the um, in the container. But you turn it back towards you, and you just crimp it on down. So what I get is a belly weighted hook customized to whatever weight that I need, and then I can control my fall rate. Uh, the reason that it's a little better when you put um, the uh, the shrink wrap on there or the shrink tubing is that after a while, if you do this and you make say 40 casts or so, this thing slamming into the water in that, that split shot's gonna pop off and it's just gonna randomly come off. When you put that shrink tubing on there, it's sort of like a rubber base. It's almost like, a, it almost provides a more stable, it's like when you sand something before you prime it, it's a more stable base for it to grip onto. So when you put that little rubber shrink tubing on there, it, it just grabs onto it better because you see it kind of slides a little. Um, but if you're on the water and you're looking to kind of test out or if you have fish that are sort of maybe you see them on your active target or you see the balls of bait and every once in a while they'll come up but you're really convinced those fish are under that bait um it's a great way to control your fall rate on on a stick bait or on a jerk bait a soft plastic jerk bait like this and to do it in the fly and literally you can go to walmart or i'm sure they have them on warehouse but i just went and got this at walmart it was like five bucks and then you get all the different sizes and all that so i can crimp whatever i want but a fluke is an og bait and there's a reason for it because it catches fish and especially in fall i think it gets overlooked we all want to throw spooks which we're going to talk about because i love throwing a spook this time of year but like you want to throw top water you want to throw your chatter baits and that but these fish get weird sometimes um they get keyed in on small bait it's a great way to downsize and they they just get hard to catch um there's a lot of heat of the moment situations where they're schooling on that bait and getting a bait in there accurately and and having it be something that they'll eat oftentimes they won't look at that hard bait unless they're in the, just the right kind of mood. But this guy, they'll always give it a look um, and adjusting the way it falls can be a real key player into uh, tapping into some more fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you got any questions or anything to add to the video, as usual, I invite any kind of discourse or anything that you bring to the table because you guys have taught me a bunch. I hope I've done the same for you too. But sharing our experiences and learning more about fishing helps us catch more fish and helps us have a good time because we love being out on the water. Tight lines for now though, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna give Bog a pat for you. We will see you back, hopefully out on the water, hanging out with Bog, catching some fish. <laughs>